Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship today with us. On uh, today is the Ascension of our Lord. Today's liturgy is Divine Service 4, which is on page 203 in the front of your hymnal. Today we're also celebrating the Lord's Supper. If you believe that you are truly receiving the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in and with the bread and the wine, we invite you to join us. We begin our service by singing our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. 
together as his people let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of god our heavenly father seeking his grace for the sake of christ and saying god be merciful to me a sinner almighty god have mercy upon us forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together our intro. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. 
after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, and authority, and power, and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands and blessed them, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. 
may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is the last Sunday in the Easter season. And today we are celebrating the ascension of our Lord which was actually this past Thursday. This day answers the question, what happened after Jesus rose from the dead and showed his disciples that he is risen? In chapter 24 of his recorded gospel, the apostle Luke said, after he had suffered, he appeared alive with many undoubted proofs, appearing to them for 40 days and speaking to them about the kingdom of God. And having said these things, as they watched, he was lifted up, and a cloud received him and took him from their eyes. This is something that we also confess when we recite the creeds. We proclaim that Jesus ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Christ's ascension into heaven marked that his mission in this world was finished until the day that he will come again. According to the traditions of the church, the celebration of the ascension is always 40 days after the Sunday of Easter. So it always happens on a Thursday. I've mentioned this last year, but in times past in some countries, Ascension Day is also considered a holiday but not such anymore, and not so here. Regardless of that, we celebrate this important date today. No matter that the world has almost forgotten the ascension of our Lord, it's important to us to remember it, because we find the promises of the Lord in this event. Jesus foretold his death and his resurrection long before they had occurred. But the disciples didn't understand the necessity of his suffering for his victory and his resurrection. When Jesus told them these things, he also said that after the resurrection, he would return to the Father. But they didn't understand why, that he couldn't stay with them physically there. They even thought that Jesus was going to defeat the Romans and reign from a throne there in the city of Jerusalem. His disciples asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? All the kingdoms of this world rise and fall, but the kingdom of God lasts forever. But for the descendant of David to reign forever just as God had promised, He had to ascend to the throne of God. Jesus had a mission. And we often talk about Jesus' mission in this world as stages of humiliation and exaltation. When he was born in Bethlehem, it was the first step in his humiliation. He humbled himself when he left his throne to come to live among us to fulfill the law of God in our place. He suffered the punishment of our sins on the cross, and death was the last stage of his humiliation and his victory at the same time. Then in the resurrection, Jesus was exalted, but the exaltation wasn't complete until his return to his Father. Because of the resurrection of Christ, we have the promise that one day we too will also be resurrected. And because of the ascension, when our Lord comes back into the world, we have the promise that we will be caught up with him in the clouds to receive the Lord in the air. And we will always be with him. When Jesus' disciples watched him ascend, two angels in white robes stood beside them and said, This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. We also have another promise. Jesus told them before his ascension, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Next Sunday we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Ten days after the ascension, according to the Lord's promise, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. After visible and audible manifestations of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Peter preached, and 3,000 people were baptized. 3,000 people received the gift of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit and holy baptism. And every single person who is baptized, even today, receives the same gift. There's still even more. Before his ascension, Christ told his disciples in chapter 28 of the Gospel of Matthew, I am with you to the end of the world. And also promised them in chapter 18, that when there are two or three are gathered in his name, he would be among them. And he's with us here today. As we are gathered together in his holy house. He's with us as we glorify his name. He's with us in his body and blood and the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We remember the ascension as the culmination of Christ's mission in the world. Now his mission is the mission of the church. As a man in visible form, Jesus could only appear in one place at one time. Because Christ has ascended, he is with his church everywhere, anywhere, at any time. And the church has the guidance of the Holy Spirit. There are no limits to the proclamation of the gospel. In 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah had to leave this world for his disciple Elisha to receive the Holy Spirit. Likewise, Jesus ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit and delivered his mission to his church. Most of the world might have forgotten about the ascension of our Lord, but we will never, ever forget and will never forget the promises that Jesus made to his disciples and all who believe in him. We are his witnesses. We have been given his mission. We have been entrusted to tell others about the promises and gifts that our Lord has made and given to us. In his name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds, and the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven.
in our prayers this morning, after each petition that ends with, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, since your Son has gone up with a shout and the sound of a trumpet, ascended in triumph and seated at your right hand, so open our lips to sing praises to our King, rejoicing and living in the truth of his victory for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your Son has commanded us to go into the, in all the world and proclaim the gospel to all of creation. Bless the proclamation of your church, that many may believe, be baptized, and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your Son has ascended to sit at your right hand until you will make his enemies his footstool. Fix your eyes on him, ruling in the midst of his enemies, that we might not fear them, but abide in his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, guide our president and governor and all those who serve us as police officers, firefighters, disaster relief workers, medical personnel, and members of our armed forces, especially Valerie Hostetler and Hank Peening. Bless them all with wisdom and strength to serve us in accord with your righteous ways. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as believers in your son's name, we call upon you to deliver Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, Lois Upton, Ted Gall, and all who suffer in our midst from sickness of body and mind and every other power of the enemy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us, especially teachers in education. We thank you for our graduates this year from high school. Guide uh, McKinnon and Rachel and keep them steadfast in your word and continue them on their path to learn more in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, keep us from hardness of heart and unbelief. Help us by your spirit to believe the witness of those who saw your son after he was risen and to joyfully recline at table with him today, eating his body and drinking his blood in a worthy manner. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, here we remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for a boundless love shown to us when you send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name 
evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it. <coughs> and remembrance of me. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. of Christ broken for you, the body 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 of Christ broken for you. May the Lord keep you in your baptism of grace.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, good morning and welcome to All in Worship today with us. Uh, I just have one announcement this morning, and it's just another reminder that 
Next Sunday isn't just the day of Pentecost, but it's also Confirmation Sunday, in which uh, we will add uh, this uh, year's uh, confirmands, uh, Owen Anderson, Kale Burkhardt, Cindy Havlett, and Cole Stutzman. They will be welcomed with us to the Lord's table. Are there any announcements this morning that I may have missed? If not, have a wonderful week in the Lord. Thank you.